The blaze was apparently sparked by an electrical fault in a front room of the Bull Street address. Fire brigade units from Ties Hill and Waratah caught were called at about 11 o'clock and managed to save the building. However, one room was gutted and the remainder of the house was severely damaged by heat and smoke. The looks on their faces were a good indication of how these Newcastle High School students fared. Though only one was jumping for joy, the others were reasonably confident. It was pretty easy. It was better than I thought it was anyway, so that was alright. It was a relief. I could have wrote heaps much more if we had more time. This year, nearly 55,500 students statewide sat one of three English exams, tailored to their studies and their aptitude for English. The related paper containing the challenging Shakespeare questions came as no real surprise. I expected most of what I've got, I got in there considering what, what last year's paper was like. But nevertheless it was a relief to have one exam at least out of the way. One down, the rest are going in. <laughs> That's another English paper tomorrow, maths and general studies next week, followed by three more weeks of exams but it will be a nail-biting three months before those vital marks are known. It's the first appearance of the Wing Warriors on the circuit this year and former national champion George Tatner will have his hands full as he tries to beat off challenges from Rod Bowen, Bob Tunks, Brad Hayward, Skip Jackson and Bob Blacklaw, who's on the comeback trail. But the hot competition won't be confined to the senior drivers as a group known as the Sydney Brat Packer quickly gaining the reputation of giant killers. The pack is made up of sons of the experienced older brigade and include Brooke Tatnell, Colin and Robert Farr, Gary Rush Jr and Grant Tunks and Gary Brazier. The Hunter Valley's main hope is Singleton's Alan Bates, who has made the switch from racing Grand Nationals to sprint cars, and he will be joined by Ross Castry, who has also made the swap. The clash between Alan Harris and John Brown will be the feature in the modified hot rod race. In their last encounter, Harris was penalised for allegedly spinning Brown out, and he will be doubly keen to make amends. The hot rod field, with many Sydney drivers nominating, shapes as the strongest this season so far. There's a saying in the police business that every contact leaves a trace or a mark. One man who's left his mark on local crime investigation is Arthur Percival. He came here in 1958 to set up a one-man bureau which covered an area from Woi Woi to Warhope and Merry War in the west. I had no transport whatsoever, working on my own. Uh, used to travelling trains and uh, buses. Eventually got a motorbike and sidecar and eventually progressed to a... Uh, panel van and currently a couple of vehicles, but uh, it was pretty hard slogging in those days. Now referred to as the physical evidence section, the job has changed in name, but not in nature. From fingerprints to fire scenes, bullets to break-ins, officers photograph and gather evidence at murder, crime and accident scenes. No, it's still the same. Uh, we still have to try and prove the same cases. And uh, the only thing that might help us is modern technology. Photographic developing trays have given way to a colour processing lab, a card file system to a nationwide computer link-up. Sergeant Paul Hunt now heads a section of 14 officers and he says that solving a crime still comes down to that one conclusive piece of evidence. The only one that I spent uh, a lot of time on was the murder of Sergeant Hayden on uh, Mount Sugarloaf 
and his notebook was torn to pieces and the evidence there was the offender's name was in his notebook and we had to put the notebook back together again like a jigsaw puzzle and that took uh, a period of over two weeks to get that notebook back together. The work can be gruesome and stressful. Sometimes having a sense of humour helps. We went to a skeleton found in the bush. He said, well, geez, he said, there's paper bags on the feet and on the hands. So one thing, Pat is a woman. He said, you know, that is mouth still open. <laughs> Arthur is looking forward to a reunion of about 30 retired investigators next week. Well, I was quite proud to be a member of the section for 23 years. Uh, I've got great satisfaction from uh, presenting good evidence to assist the detectives in bringing people to justice that deserved it. Just a day after Newcastle Supreme Court sentenced Lee's killer, her mother and grandmother met with others who've experienced the anguish of murder in their immediate family. The Victims of Crime Association was set up to help the families of victims of violent crime. With this group's support, Robin Lee and Margaret Heyman will make sure that Lee's death was not in vain. To us, she'll never be forgotten, um, and I don't want other people to forget her. Through her death, hopefully, we can um, get things changed. To um, have a die like she did, to me, was some, is something that we'll never, and I mean never, get over. We've accepted her death, but not the manner of dying. So the, the cause, the victims of crime cause, is one that you feel very strongly about. Oh yes. that, that I'll, I've, made a vow that I'll dedicate my life to uh, the victims of crime and, and uh, try and get some laws changed. Matthew Webster is among the first murderers to be convicted under the new truth in sentencing legislation. He was sentenced to a prison term of 14 years plus an additional six-year term in which parole can be granted. Robin Lee says the fixed term is a hollow victory. She'd hoped for a harsher punishment. But unlike others sentenced under the old legislation, she knows Webster will spend the entire 14 years behind bars. Perhaps the thing that troubles Robin most is the way her daughter's name has been dragged through the mud. While Webster was defended by a string of character witnesses, there was never the opportunity to defend Lee's good name. It's for this reason that the Victims of Crime Association is campaigning for the introduction of victim impact statements before sentencing. If Robin Lee was given the opportunity, she would have used the court process to dispel the rumours which surrounded Lee. A day after Webster's sentence, Robin wants to set the record straight on her daughter. Lee had um, never been involved with the police before. She had no prior convictions. She was a decent girl. Um, she attended school on a regular basis. She was aiming to do six years of high school and then go on to be a veterinary surgeon. Um, she wanted to travel the world. Um, she loved people. She went to church. She went to um, good Catholic schools. She was a decent person. This is the newest breakthrough in vision technology, a video projector which produces an image 15 times the viewing area of a 63 centimetre TV. The machine will accept any source of pictures from a video, home computer or TV unit. The conventional cathode ray tubes are replaced by liquid crystal panels which form a high intensity beam. The picture can be projected on any flat surface, including a wall at home, and it weighs just 14 kilograms. The biggest problem for the home video enthusiast is the price. At just under $10,000, it will probably find more uses in commercial communication. Uh, initially, I would say conference centres, hotels, clubs, um, 
lecture theatres, anywhere where there's a, uh, a projection unit that's been previously in uh, operation that needs to be updated. From outside, the new office on the Pacific Highway at Charlestown doesn't look like much, but its small upstairs rooms form the latest hub of international fundraising efforts for the World Vision organisation. World Vision is known for its work in underdeveloped African, Asian and Central American countries, and most recently with Romanian orphans. Its running of 40-hour famines and child sponsorships bring home the plight of the helpless to Australia and 80 other countries. Support for the organisation has doubled in this region over the last few years and now represents $3 million a year in donations. World Vision's hopes in the Hunter are simple. To grow and expand and to involve people more with World Vision. Milton Morris is on the national board of World Vision and officially opened the office today. Among the gathering of supporters was the Bull family. They sponsor a child in Africa. Good because we'll be helping them get food and water. We know that it actually does work, you know, that she is receiving an education. Jeff Gregory is a former Newcastle radio personality. He and his wife Pam are now the full-time staff at the new office. I've had the opportunity of actually going over to third world countries and seeing what happens there and I suppose having worked in radio it uh, gave me the, the gift of the gab to put it bluntly and I've been able to, to use that in some way to come back and to tell people about the needs of people in third world countries and hopefully to get the message across. It is the reconstruction of Wyong Road, a $37 million project that prompted the barrage of criticism. Bob Graham says the public will have to pay an extra $15 million because the council's original cost estimate was incorrect, an estimate that is, according to the Roads and Traffic Authority, almost impossible to make. This land in Warnervale East also came under scrutiny. Eventually 26,000 home sites will be released, creating a new city the size of Bathurst. But Mr Graham has criticised council for the delay in releasing the land. The fact is that, uh, that council has put a proposition to the minister of his government uh, in respect of um, East Warnervale or Warnervale East, and we're looking for the release of about 22,000 sites there but we can do nothing until the Minister adjudicates. That's now been with the Minister for six months. Recently, members of Council had a think tank weekend at Nelson Bay to discuss the Warnervale land. Though that action prompted a compliment from the Premier's department, it prompted quite the opposite response from Mr Graham. When we're in such a recession uh, in Australia, not only in New South Wales or Wyong Shire, I think they should lead the way and uh, not take these sort of uh, trips away because I know that many of the uh, uh, people that live in Wyong Shire couldn't afford to go to uh, Port Stephens or to uh, down to the end of their street for a holiday because of the uh, tight money situation. But Wyong Council remains confident it has done nothing wrong and welcomes any official inquiry. In fact, the Council is to be the subject of a performance and management review because it wants to increase rates beyond the pegged limit. Rebecca Skinner, NBN News.
Practice makes perfect before a big jump, 24 skydivers out of one plane. It takes 15 minutes to get up to 4,500 metres and just three minutes to come down. We've got uh, world champions competing, have just come back from Thailand, Spain. Um, most of our instructors are world class parachutists and we're quite proud of it. We're the only club in Australia that has that many instructors who have been at the world championships. Great. Skycam catches the feeling, the skydivers free fall for 60 seconds, making formations which are judged on timing and style. It's then time to pull the chute and glide home. You could be forgiven for thinking you were on the farm and not at Maitland's show today as champions were judged in all the cattle breeds. The supreme beef exhibit this Devon Bull from the Gloucester region. There's a lot of hard work and effort goes into it and it's good when you can bring out something and the judge thinks you've got a pretty good animal and you can go home feeling satisfied, satisfied you've had a good day's work. The main arena grandstand was jammed to capacity, fulfilling organisers' hopes for a 30,000 strong crowd over the three day event. The Hunter's Horseflesh was on show in championship show jumping and dressage events. Axman showed how the bush was conquered in the old days and Sideshow Alley was brimming as usual with the Saturday spree. Miraculously, the weather has held off for the show. 17 of the past 20 shows have been rain affected. The old station master's cottage in Scott Street is a popular haunt for inner city derelicts. Norman Osbund often visits to check on their welfare. At 8.30 this morning he found the semi-naked body of a middle-aged woman slumped against a side wall. She had been savagely bashed and brutalised. It, it is a shocking, shocking thing for anyone to stumble on. Whoever did it is very sick. Police cordoned off the area and began an intensive search for clues. Tonight, detectives exhibited jewellery worn by the woman, but as yet have no leads on her identity or any reasons for the attack. At this stage all we have is a, um, a middle-aged woman um, with severe head injuries. At this stage we, um, our inquiries are a bit um, tied up with identification. We're having trouble with identification and um, we'll be seeking assistance there as much as possible. Ironically, the murder probably happened only hours after nationwide marches protesting against violence towards women. Police investigations are continuing. Peter Ryan, NBN News. It was a 6am start for the Hunter River's 33 endorsed prawn trawlers. The season was gazetted to begin on October 1, but fishermen put the catch on hold when tests revealed that many young prawns had spilled downstream from their nurseries upriver. The delay inevitably put financial pressure on families who depend on the season for their livelihood, but the men reasoned the catch would ultimately improve if the prawns were given time to grow. Well, was it worth the wait? I definitely think it was, yeah. They have grown a lot more than what they were when we tested it. George Gibbons is an old hand in this game. He's fished the river for 20 years. While last week's heavy rain hardly helped the prawn season, he's optimistic the change in weather is a good omen for a healthy catch. I think everybody's done pretty good this morning. I don't think there'll be any complaints. The Hunter River fishermen are now banking on a one-month extension to the season. Negotiations are now underway with the Fisheries Department to secure the extra time. All we hope now is that the Department will give us the other month at the end of the season now and uh, I think it should be real good if they give us that. Hunter River prawns were selling today for $10 a kilo. Retailers say that price should hold if the prawns run consistently.
nestled in the leafy Gosford hinterland, the Mount Penang Juvenile Detention Centre is classified as a medium security institution. That means it has swimming pools and playing fields, but no fence. Authorities say it operates on a trust system, but over the last four days that system has broken down. There was two boys escaped on Saturday evening from a dormitory and last night another six boys escaped from the same dormitory. How did they get out? Uh, on both occasions they actually uh, cut through a grill on the dormitory windows uh, and removed a window and got out. Gosford police say they're sick and tired of chasing escapees. So far this year we have had probably about in the vicinity of 90 young ones escape or uh, shoot through from Mount Penang. Uh, we've had 75 warrants issued for their arrest, that is uh, when they are not re-arrested shortly after their, their escape. The Department of Family and Community Services says the trust system is essential for rehabilitation and has no plans to upgrade security. Police say that's simply dangerous. Mount Penang houses uh, young offenders with all types of uh, criminal history. There's certainly dangerous offenders up there. Uh, certainly they're capable of committing uh, any type of offence uh, when they escape from up there. Despite an extensive search by police and Mount Penang staff, none of the recent escapees have yet been recaptured. Bruce McKenzie, NBN News. This fabric mesh welding machine is the only one of its kind in the Hunter. In just over a minute, it can produce a 6 by 2.4 metre mesh sheet. That adds up to around 2 tonnes every hour, and that means big dollars will be staying in the Hunter. All our product from Beverage Bluing Products will be supplied out of here, and uh, previously it's gone to um, national companies, and uh, so it'll stay in, in the Newcastle region, yes. And what sort of figures are we looking at there? Approximately $50,000 a month. But the agreement with sister company Beverage Building won't even begin to use the machine's full capacity. It can produce up to $2.8 million worth of mesh each year. Exactly how much could you produce and what would that be worth? Uh, about uh, 250 tonnes a month, which would be worth about $250,000. But we'd probably only expect to get about half of that in the next... In the short to medium term. 